Good morning, I'm Militant Ginger and this is my mighty car, the locomotive. Unfortunately for me, the locomotive uh, is due for inspection in two weeks and we've got uh, a couple of problems. First of all, the exhaust has more holes in it than the plot of inception. And secondly, the brakes are completely shot. First problem is that this little brake light comes on. Now that can just be as simple as uh, the fact that your uh, brake fluid levels are low. Or in our case, it could be something slightly more serious. I can't show you right now, but uh, when you break the car, there are some very loud and very ugly noises coming from the wheels. Uh, it's grinding. And by the time you hear some grinding, that means there's a big problem. What happens is the uh, in a car, there are pads or shoes that squeeze in and stop the wheels going round on something called the rotor. And when you hear the metal grinding, that means that the brake pads have completely gone. And so you've got metal grinding against metal. So what you've done is you've turned a $20 job of replacing the brake pads into like a $120 job of replacing the brake pads and the rotors, which are the metal grinding against them. So I'm going to show you how to fix the uh, brake pads and the rotors of my Lincoln Town Car. The first thing we need to do is uh, get the car jacked up and take the wheel off. First thing, chocks under the wheels. You're dealing with the brakes, don't want the car to come rolling forward. Next, you want to loosen the front nuts before you jack the car up. Because if they're stuck on there with any force, then you could make your car come completely off the jack. There we go. The trick is to get the jack under the axle, not the body. Because if you lift up the body, then the springs will keep the tire on the floor. You jack up the axle, the whole wheel will get lifted up. We don't need very much, just enough to get some clearance underneath there. Make sure you keep your nuts safe. Okay, so this is what is underneath the wheel. We've got this big metal thing here is the rotor, and this is the thing that the brake pads squeeze to slow the wheel down. If you feel it, it's all bumpy because uh, the brake pads have gone down to metal and they're grinding into it. This is the caliper up here. Now what the caliper does is it squeezes the brake pads, which are in here, to kind of squeeze this and stop the wheel going around. So we need to take the caliper off and swap out the brake pads and take the rotor off and put a new one of those on. So the first thing we need to do is get off the caliper, which you can do with these bolts here. Boom, that's on. Make sure it's turned in the right direction. And we can start unbolting the caliper. Dun, dun, dun. And off comes the brake caliper. Now you'll see it stays attached to the car because of this. This is the brake line. And that goes into this big thing here, which is a piston, which pushes the brake pads in and out. And here are the brake pads themselves. So, oh, we need something to rest that on, quite importantly. And look, a jack stand. That's handy. These brake pads should slide straight out. Bump. Ah, this one's a wee bit trickier. Bump. If you look at them, you will see they haven't ground down that much. They're not that bad. But this is the stuff that grinds against the rotors and starts them moving. You can see all sorts of cracks in there and stuff. So next we want to get the brake rotor off. See that? I'm gonna get a flat head screwdriver and prise off this little cap here. And come off. Dun, dun, dun. Very easy. Bump. And there we have little clip here you can just unclip there's a little clip here we need to squeeze that in to get 
the right card around. They're both asleep. Coming. Take that clip out. Make sure it's nice and squish. Keep it safe. And you should be able to take this cap off. Okay, then there is a bolt in the center here. Undo that. And we should be ready to rumble. And that comes straight off. Bonk. So next we get the new brake rotor. Bum, bum, bum. Slide that on. And it should work nicely like that. Put in this thing. Okay, the bits I'm installing right now are called the bearings. And you take the bearings out of the old rotor and you put them in the new one. There are bearings at the front and there are bearings at the back. And those are what make the wheel fit really snugly to the axle. So it's very important to remember to replace those and check to see what condition they're in because if they're in bad condition, you might need to replace them. And this goes back in. This bit here. Then, fit this little jobby in there, let's slide on. Now the one thing to remember is that this little jobby here, you can see, you have to make sure it's completely squished flat, otherwise you're not gonna be able to get them back in again. So once you've done that, it's time to put the cap back on. And you should be good to go. And the next step is to deal with the calipers. So, these are the original brake pads. One goes in there, bonk. The other one goes out here, bonk. And what happens is this thing, which is a piston, when you push the brake pedal, it pushes um, brake fluid through here, and that pushes the piston out and squishes the two pads together, which squish the rotor together like that. So the first thing we need to do, now we've taken that off, is actually push the piston back so we can actually put in the new brake pads. So for that, you'll need something called the C-clamp which is basically just a C-shaped thing and you undo this and it makes the hole here bigger and then eventually it'll be big enough we can put it in here and then tighten it again and what that will do is push the piston back there we go. And then if you undo the C-clamp, you will notice that the piston stays, and that gives you plenty of room, then install the brake pads. Now, I bought Pro Stop brake pads. It actually comes with two sets for both front wheels. So, if you look at these two, so this is how thick they're meant to be, like half an inch and it's gone all the way down, pretty much the bare metal. So that's not good. Anyway, squish this one in. There we go, it'll take a bit of wrangling, but eventually you'll be able to get it in. The next brake pad, okay. let's do a little comparison. It's not pretty, is it? Yeah, this is right down, pretty much the bare metal. This is what the original's meant to look like. So once you've done that, Next step is to put the brake calipers back on. And hopefully, if you push the piston out enough, it should be very simple to be able to get them back on because there's plenty of room. And these two bolts go here. And that is back on there. So you have a new rotor and you have new brake pads and we're all set to put the original wheel back on. Right. Then, let the wheel down. And tighten up the bolts. And you're done. Well, you're not done quite yet. You have to do the other side first now. But that should be exactly the same. Very simple process. So as I said, you need to do the uh, other side next. 
completely the same process. Um, I'm not gonna make you sit through that. Now the last thing to check on is gonna be the brake fluid itself. That's housed in here, which is called the master cylinder. Pop it open like that. You can see how much is in there. Seems to be plenty here. So. Okay, so now, when you start the car, the brake lights are off. So that means the car should be good to go. So that is how you change the front brakes of a 1989 Lincoln Town Car. Should work the same for a Ford uh, Crown Victoria or a Mercury Grand Marquis. Uh, very simple and straightforward. Just before I go, I wanted to say, you probably remember me saying in the beginning bit, the reason I wanted to, to change the rotors and the pads are because I heard metal grinding. Now, if you ever hear metal grinding from your brakes, that is an extremely bad thing. So I showed you one of the brake pads earlier. This one, if you'll notice here, has gone straight down to the bare metal. Like, there is no brake pad materials left. It was actually burning into the metal. And if you look at the rotor it was attached to, the other one wasn't too bad. This one, it's like pitted right down to the metal. It looks almost like a vinyl disc with all these grooves and things. This is really, really, really bad. If I'd like slammed on the brakes or something like that, then, you know, eventually it would have just stopped working and I'd have gone into whatever it was in front. So, whether you want to repair them yourself or whether you want to get a professional to do it, if you hear your brakes grinding, get them fixed straight away.